In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls, giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Fiat. Okay, and that brings us to lesson four of Louisa and happiness in the divine will. This lesson was um, missing the first part of Father Thomas Celso reading this segment, so I'll read up to the point where he begins reading and teaching. Fiat. Lesson four. This is why until creatures let my divine will reign, in the world there will be not even the idea, nor the true knowledge of what true peace and fullness of happiness mean. Volume 22, September 3rd, 1927. Until the soul lets the divine will reign, she will always be unhappy and restless. Diversity of Martyrdom of Soul and of Body I was crossing the sea of light of the divine fiat, following its acts, and oh how I comprehended that all good is in it. And my always lovable Jesus, moving in my interior, told me, My daughter, until the creature comes to letting my divine will reign within her, she will be always unhappy, always restless, because as good, holy, learned, and rich as she may be, she will feel within herself that she lacks the fullness of happiness and the sea of peace, which are such that from no side may she be disturbed or her happiness broken. So she can only be happy by half, and her peace will be halved. And because it is not whole, the half that she lacks will keep the way open to bring unhappiness and disturbance. See, this happens also in the natural order. Someone is rich. He lacks nothing. He possesses his ten twenty millions or billions, but knowing that he could acquire more and be even richer, he feels restless, unhappy, and as though putting his riches aside, he is all foot, all works, all words, all eyes for the other riches he would like to acquire. Poor one, how can he be happy, peaceful, if he lacks the source of goods which says to him, Rest, everything is yours, 
and everything you want is in your power. Someone else is king, but how much unhappiness under that crown. Fear of losing his kingdom, hopes and yearnings to acquire more kingdoms, to rule over the whole world at the cost of wars. So possessing a kingdom is nothing other than an open way to render the poor king unhappy and restless. A third one is learned, but not possessing all the sciences, knowing that he could possess more, he does not rest, nor does he feel happy and peaceful. How many times before someone else who is more learned than he is, he feels humiliated and feels the unhappiness caused by his lacking the fullness of sciences. Now, the same happens in the supernatural order. Someone is good, but he does not feel within himself that he possesses the source of goodness because he feels that on some occasions his patience is weak, his firmness in good is intermittent, his charity is very often limping, his prayer is inconstant. This renders him unhappy, restless, because he sees that his happiness is not whole. It is as though halved, and the other half which is missing serves to torture him and make him unhappy. Poor one, how clearly it shows that he lacks the kingdom of my divine will. In fact, if it were reigning in him, he would possess the source of goodness, which will say to him, Rest, everything is in your power, source of patience, of firmness, of charity, of prayer. And feeling the source within himself, he would feel the sea of happiness and of peace extend inside and outside of himself, and unhappiness and restlessness would no longer find the way to enter into him. Someone else is holy, but on some circumstances, he does not feel within himself the source of holiness, the light which makes one know everything, which points everything out to him, the road and the happiness. The knowledge of God is not full. The heroism of the virtues vacillate in him. So, with all his holiness, he is not happy, nor peaceful, because, since the total dominion of my divine fiat is missing, he lacks the source of the light, which eclipses the seed of all evils, and substitutes it with the source of happiness and of peace. This is why, until creatures let my divine will reign, in the world there will be not even the idea, nor the true knowledge of what true peace and fullness of happiness mean. All right, and so this is where Father Celso is going to begin. Fiat. All things, however good and holy, will not have their fullness, because since the dominion and reigning of the supreme volition, the holy divine will is missing, that which communicates the source of all happiness is missing, which is a spring, and therefore uh, one can take it from wherever he wants and however he wants it. This is the reason for all my cares, that my holy divine will be known. You see what Jesus is saying? He knows the misery out there. He knows your misery. And he says, this is the reason for all my divine care, that my holy divine will be known to form its kingdom in the midst of creatures. Because I, God, want to see all souls happy. And of that happiness, which I, God, issue them uh, in creating them, and they were delivered to, as, and they were delivered from the womb of the Creator who possesses all possible imaginable happiness. 
So Jesus shows us that um, he wants these readings read. And I've heard souls, uh, sorry, it's hard to say, even priests say you can't read this. And it's wrong. Uh, uh, I'll tell you a story what happened in uh, Corrado last October. The Archbishop, somebody in the United States stood, stood up and said, we cannot allow the divine will on the internet. We cannot allow any publishing of Louisa. And this girl, uh, she is the English-speaking teacher of Corrado, stood up and said, I have to disagree, Archbishop, she said, because the man spoke and then she spoke. She says, Archbishop, I was away from the church and I began to read the divine will and the diffusions of the writings. And she said, uh, not only did I become a Catholic, but now I love Louisa. I love the divine will. She says, I'll give my life for it, basically. And the Archbishop looked at her and said, I agree with you, Louisa, he said. He says, the diffusion of the divine will must continue. So, uh, again, you'll hear people say, oh, you can't read this, you're not allowed to read this, and God help their souls. God help them. You heard what Jesus said. This is the reason I want the knowledge of my divine will to be known. You know, uh, there's many people, uh, there's only one that doesn't want you to read, that's the devil. The devil does not want you to read the divine will because he knows when you read this and you put this into practice, your his kingdom is gone. So he is using some souls to say, you can't read, you can't talk about this, and that is wrong. God help them. When Father Bucci comes, Father Bucci is going to tell you very clearly what you can do. You know what Father Bucci is going to say? He's going to say, do you know Louisa? You go, yes. He goes, do you want Louisa? And you're going to say, yes. And he goes, then you got Louisa. <laughs> She's yours. Read, read, read. And that's what he's going to say. Uh, no one is in charge in the United States. No one is in charge in the United States, even though there's some people that have been in charge. And he's going to explain very, very clearly. He's going to say that some people have said that they are in charge, they are, they have, they're authorized, and he's going to say very, very clearly they have never been authorized, they are, and they are not authorized. Yeah, that's all, that's all coming, so well, he's going to be here on September 11th, September 18th. There's a shout from the crowd. I thought it was better than a tomato. Yeah, don't worry. Everybody's going to know when he's coming. He's coming throughout the whole United States. And let me tell you, he is on the warpath. When we talked about some individuals, he said, ignore them. And we talked, but they say they're in charge. He said, ignore them. And then he says, he says somebody says, but they say they are authorized. And he, his words, and you'll hear it from his mouth, they pollute Louisa. That's his word. And uh, what you're going to see very, very clearly is, and this is what's so great, uh, the divine will is going to be seen as it should be seen. So the, the United States has been held captive uh, since 1981, uh, and now it's going to be free. Father Bushi is coming here. He's been sent by his bishop to straighten out the United States. It's the only country in the world that has trouble because of individuals who say that they are in charge, that they have been authorized, that they work for this and for that. For that. You're going to be really surprised when Father Bushi comes that uh, he is in charge. And that's what he said on the phone. I am in charge. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he is very funny. He, he, if you, Father Bucci, here's the picture here. If you, if you, he's a slice between, like I said, Santa Claus and Padre Pio. He's just, he is the happiest guy you've ever met in your life. He's just a, and you'll see it. You're, you're going to really get it. And see, there's nothing that's forbidden. Nothing that's forbidden. You know, all these people that are putting these rules and regulations, you know, Father Bush goes, who are these people? He can't believe it. Who is saying these things? Who is doing this? So he's coming to straighten this thing out and how glorious that's going to be. The United States will be put on the right track again. So, you know, go talk to him, ask him any question you want, and uh, you'll hear what he has to say. Okay. Not to possess the divine will. It's the greatest unhappiness of the creature. Volume 23, October 6, 1927. One who possesses my divine will has the eyesight. This is divine eyesight. To be able to recognize what belongs to my holy divine will itself. Man alone, Adam alone did not recognize me. Uh, because he did not possess the eyesight and the fine senses of the smell of my will after he left it. I had to tell him in order to make myself reconcile, recognize. And that's what Jesus did. That's why we have the gospel. He's telling us, this is who I am, the Son of God. With all my telling, 
many did not even believe me, because one who does not possess my divine will is blind and deaf and without the sense of smell to be able to recognize what belongs to the divine will. Not to possess the divine will is the greatest unhappiness of the creature. You see? So if you have these books, you possess it. If you don't have the books, there's the internet set right there. Go to bookofheaven.com. Rasa.org. It's yours. They're yours. And the church says that. Archbishop Cherry said uh, on July 27th, he said, since the Vatican has released these documents, these volumes of Louisa, it is because they want to give it to the world, to everyone. So read, read, read. So Jesus says, not to possess the divine will, not to read the writing, is the greatest unhappiness of the creature. You know, God wants you to have great happiness. And the only way you're going to get it is to read and to put it in practice. He is the poor Cretan, blind, deaf youth who, not possessing the light of divine fiat, uses the very created things by taking the excrements which they release while leaving inside of them the true good which they contain. So basically, you know, instead of, you know, looking at a cow for what it possesses, you take what the cow leaves on the ground. That's that's what he's saying. So he wants you to receive the nourishment. What sorrow to see creatures without the nobility of the life of my divine will. See, he he wants to return to us to to be Lord of the earth. I mean, that's that's what he gave to man, and that's what we're supposed to possess. We really are supposed to say to the you know clouds, come over and give me a little rain here, or the sun, you know, come out and give me a little more sun here. To the plants, okay, I want some apples today. There's, everything is supposed to grow at the command of, of, of Adam. But since Adam fell, uh, we're at the, we're at the, the whim of the anger of nature against man. Why are these hurricanes, floods, tidal waves, you know, volcanoes? It's, it's because creation, Jesus says, is angry with man because we are out of sync. We're out of order. And they're trying to lead us back to God. I mean, you're going to, again, you're going to see things that are going to be astonishing. Volume 23, January 18th, 1928. Oh, how happy they will feel. Here's the utility of many things I have manifested to you. The surprising truth, the many surprising truths, and the promise of so many goods, which I must give to the children of the Fiat Volantas. They will be the gospel, the basis, the inexhaustible font from which all will draw the celestial life, the terrestrial happiness, and the restoration of their creation. Oh, how happy they will feel. Those who with yearning will drink in large gulps these founts of my knowledge because they contain the virtue of beginning the life of heaven and of banishing, banishing any unhappy. It's forbidden to be unhappy. The ruling from God is no more unhappy. Can you imagine? I'm sorry, you have to leave your unhappy. You only can stay here if you're happy. So the consequences of the divine will is peace, joy, and happiness. Fiat, fiat, fiat. Read, 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 study, put into practice. Psalm 24, July 10, 1928. As Father, I, I love and want everyone to be happy. Then he kept silent. And after a little while, Jesus said, My daughter, the human will has produced so much evil as to form the unhappy state of the poor creature. It changed her lot, her fortune. So think about it. You know, all this, I mean, I mean, you go to the television, you go to the newspapers, you go to the internet, you go to the movies, you go to magazines, you go to uh, the news. It's terrible. Somebody said to me, well, life isn't that bad. We're killing 4,000 babies a day just in the United States. Oh, it's, it's okay. We're, we, we are legalizing, making everything that you want to do fine and happy. It doesn't matter how you want to live. Everything's okay. And if you don't agree with it, then you're wrong. I mean, it's, Jesus said, the laws are going to be turned upside down. What is good is looking to look bad. What bad is going to look, is going to look good. You know, these are the worst of times. You know, I, my, my, mother, my mother's in the hospital this week, and, and what I saw there, you know, is astonishing. They don't care about life. To kill is fine. You know, it's, it's, it's really amazing. Well, we'll let them starve to death. We, we, it's okay if they, you know, uh, you know, don't have any more, uh, liquid. You know, it's, it's fine. 
You know, they're, they're not, they're not suited to live. It's just a burden. You know, how horrible this is. You know, it, you know, you look at what's happening and, and everything is, is evil and why? Because the human will is in charge. And so Jesus says, since, and since I am happy by nature, everything that came out of our creative hands in creation, everything that came out of the fullness of his, of happiness, therefore everything inside and outside of man is perennial joy and, and, and his perennial joy and happiness flew. The human will drove the sea of true and per- perpetual peace out of itself, which driven out took refuge in the womb of its creator, who had delivered it so that all past for all souls, past, present, and future, all of his holy works might be happy, might be enjoyed. And even though we are happy by our nature, and no one can shade our happiness, we are forced to see many unhappy. We are forced to see these people, whom primacy and creation had been given, to see our children unhappy, to see the sea of our happiness is not enjoyed uh, by the one uh, who was the owner of it. That's us. And even though it causes harm to us, it is always a, no harm to us. It is always a sorrow. Now, Louisa, who lives in my holy divine will, Louisa calls the sea of happiness once again into herself. Louisa removes from us the sight of the unhappiness of the poor creatures, and Louisa makes us twice as happy because we God see that our divine happiness follows its way toward our children through Louisa. You see how important she is. Therefore, my will will put all things in place and will remove the unhappiness produced by the human will, which, with its poisonous slobber, knows how to embitter everything and makes everything turbid. How beautiful it is to see everyone happy. Everyone is going to be happy. It's, it's going, it, what is coming upon the earth is, is the kingdom of God and a pure joy, pure happiness. The kingdom of the devil is gone. It's going to be gone. It's over. It's complete. It's kaput. You know, when a lady steps on the, the head of the serpent and crushes the head, kaput, and it's, that's what's going to happen. It's gone. It's over. And now what happens? It's the new era of peace, of joy, and of happiness. What a consolation for a father to have see, to, to have and see the crown of his children, all happy, all rich, all healthy, all beautiful, always smiling, smiling, never crying. Oh, how he enjoys and feels himself swimming in his own happiness and that of his children. And I, God, am more than a father. And I, God, feel within me the happiness of my children because it is my own thing, my own happiness, and can get, can, can enter into me. While unhappiness is something extraneous to me and which does not belong to me and has no way to enter into me, I feel the sorrow of seeing it, but not of feeling it. And as a father, I love and I want everyone to be happy. That's what the divine will is. And, and really, I mean, you have to prove to Jesus that you want this gift. You have to prove it to him. Uh, it, it's essential that you prove it to him. Uh, and how do you prove it to him that you want this gift? It's by reading and rereading and putting into practice these gifts. What we have on the internet is given to me from the tribunal. So what we have has been translated by Marina in California. Father Bucci has been with Marina. Father Bucci has seen the internet. Father Bucci agrees with us. He knows Marina. There is a bishop in out west who wants to put an imprimatur on all of what Marina has translated because he reads Italian and has seen what she has translated and he says this is good, it's excellent. Excellent translation. And so, what, what, again, don't let anybody tell you you can't read this. I don't care who they are. Jesus says he wants you to read this. And as you read, as you uh, embrace this, how good it is. How, how, how happy you're going to be. Line 24, September 28, 1928. In each of these lives contain a happiness distinct from the others to be communicated to the creatures. Each truth about the divine will contains a happiness distinct from the others. After this, I was continuing my acts in the divine volition. So who teaches us how to do our acts in the divine volition? It's Louisa. She teaches us. We learn from her. 
we copy, we mimic what she does. And again, any good teacher who says this is a, two and two is four, and somebody says, well, two and two is five, you know, you're not listening to the teacher. You would, Louisa has these truths. And what we're called to do is echo Louisa. What does Louisa say? Echo Louisa. Now, one of the things, like I said before, which is really necessary, is a uh, a prayer book of the prayers of Louisa. You know, some people have said, well, I'm going to write up my own prayers. And half the time, they're wacko. You know, it's like it has nothing to do with the divine will. It has something to do with little Buddhism, something to do with little Hinduism, something to do with little uh, Catholicism, but it's not divine will. Oh, this is the divine will. It's crazy. Echo Louisa. Copy Louisa. Be one with Louisa. So when Jesus looks at you, he sees Louisa. You don't want him to see, you know, half you and half Louisa. It's not going to be a pretty sight. This is my daughter, great grace I have given to you, Louisa. And through you, Louisa, the whole world, to the whole world, by manifesting to you, Louisa, so many truths about my divine will. So Jesus is saying there is great grace given to you if you have the value. In fact, not only are my truths divine lies, each truth is a divine life, which my highest goodness puts out, by locating of itself life for as many truths as it manifested, manifests, uh, again, as Catholics, we know this. When the priest says, this is my body, and there's, there's a thousand hosts there, each host contains 100% of Jesus, not uh, a percentage of Jesus. And it's the same thing here. Each act is a divine life. So as Catholics, we understand this. If, if God can multiply himself in hosts to give himself individually to each soul, he can do this too as well. For, so for those that are not Catholic, this is a very hard thing to understand. Bifocating life with many truths to manifest. What does that mean? Well, if you're Catholic, you'd understand it. That's a way of, you know, let's be of one church, one flock, one shepherd. But each of these lives contains a happiness distinct from the others, to be communicated to creatures, and a glory different from the others, which the creature can give to the one God who has manifested it. However, these happinesses will be communicated to creatures when they come to know these truths which I taught to you, Louisa. So you're not going to receive a happiness until you know what Jesus taught Louisa. They are like many queens, each possessing extensive properties distinct from one another, and they are waiting for people, for people to know that these queens exist, which contain their properties, and yearn and want to enrich and to make the ones for whom they were delivered uh, from our divine womb. If you knew how suffocated our divine love remains after having released so many happinesses from our fraternal womb for as many truths as we have manifested, and in seeing that souls, creatures, do not enjoy these feasts in order to give us, God, the glory which they should give us because they ignore such a great good and only because they do not want to occupy themselves with making known a good and grace is so great. Because they, because they, listen to that, because they ignore the writing because they do not want to occupy themselves with reading the writing. Jesus says, that can't be us. We can't ignore these anymore. We can't uh, occupy ourselves with everything else but the writing. This is a divine sorrow for us, God, which you cannot comprehend. Therefore, pray, pray unceasingly that my divine will be known. How? By reading and putting it into practice. Pray incessantly that my divine will be known and reign in the midst of creatures, so that as Father, Father of the age to come, I may break the bread of happiness for my children. See, Jesus is saying, I want you to read this. There are humans that are saying, oh, you can't read it. Father, when Father Bucci comes, he's going to say very clearly, hey, read it. It's good for you. Let's end with a prayer. In the, name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Mother, and Queen of the Holy Divine Will. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. 
Have pity on me, and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.